heard that in 2019, during the year of return, over 1 million tourists arrived in Ghana. Did you know that despite COVID in 2021, over 150,000 tourists arrived in Ghana for festive season? Take the shackles off my feet. Which means that Ghana is a perfect tourist destination for tourists. Whenever these stories arrives in Ghana, all they want to see is the Black Star Square or the Kwame Nkrumah Memorial Park and some of them might even walk to the art centre to go get themselves souvenirs. If you are lucky, they will take you to Cape Coast to go see Cape Coast Castle and Elmina Castle. That's it. But I just want to tell you that Ghana is not just Accra and Cape Coast. Living in Ghana is peaceful, but visiting Ghana is really worth it. You know why? Because Ghana is a tropical paradise with waterfalls wherever you turn, rolling mountains and pristine white sand beaches, the incredible biodiversity, the magnificent landscape, and lastly, the beautiful, rich culture we have in Ghana. Will you all agree with me that the water region is equal to Ghana, but yet, Let's explore. You shocked? You don't believe me, Steven? Intro. You're still not convinced, right? I guess Ghana's Grammy nominee, Rocky Dawini, would definitely convince you. Ooh, I dedicate this song to you, my beautiful people. Meet um, Ghana's Grammy nominee. I mean, he has been following me everywhere I go to. This is the third time I'm meeting him in two weeks. Uh, is it your first no, time in the world? He follows me. No, he follows me. You always, go, always I come and meet. Man there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I, I want to know is it your first time in the Volta region? Uh, not the first time, but you know, I, I see it as constantly. I have to rediscover it. You know, I came through a long time ago when I was at Legon. You know, anytime I'm traveling to Aflao or I'm going to Nigeria, or I'm going to Benin, I stopped through Keta and all of that, you know. But now I am appreciating, you know, the tourist uh, kind of uh, value of the place. And also the, you know, connecting with the people, the food, and just really to know that we have such a beautiful country. You know, and you never know how grand and how important of a gift that we have as a country till you start exploring it. And Volta region has been a great discovery for me, great learning, being in the mountains, you know, Ho, Amadope area, and then being the coastal areas. And at the same time, to see all the work that is being done, the sea defense, the you know stuff that is being, the challenges that are going on. By the same time, knowing that. This is an incredible part of our heritage as Ghanaians. This is an incredible region, it's an incredible people, incredible language, incredible food, and we all need to celebrate and partake in it. Would you say Ghana is not just Accra? Charlie, Accra, Accra is Accra de Pass. If you want to see Ghana, make you go different parts of Ghana. Accra there, you for land there, sleep there one day, and then after you finish this one, you can go if you, if you go party, and I'm not, I'm not down in Accra as the capital. <laughs> but to to appreciate the capital, you have to really get into the fabric of the country. Oh, beautiful people. Thank you so much for taking time. Yes. <laughs> you all wonder how this beautiful region was formed? The Volta region was originally part of the German colony of Togoland in West Africa. 
During the First World War, the German colony of Togoland was divided into two in 1916 as British Togoland and French Togoland. French Togoland went to France whilst Britain administered British Togoland as a trust territory on behalf of the League of Nations. In 1922, British Togoland was formally placed under British rule while French Togoland was placed under French rule. The political status of British Togoland changed after the Second World War when it became a United Nations trust territory administered by Britain. During the heat of the struggle for independence in the Gold Coast, a status plebiscite was conducted in British Togoland in May 1956 to decide the future of British Togoland. 58% of the voting population of British Togoland voted to merge with the Gold Coast for independence in March 1957. As a result of the 1956 plebiscite, British Togoland merged with the Gold Coast at independence as Ghana. The present-day voter region is largely part of the original British Togoland that merged with the Gold Coast to form Ghana at independence in March 1957. Since the Volta region is less explored, when my friends from Jamaica visited Ghana, I had to let them know that the Volta region is the place to go. But in case you want to visit the Volta region, you can actually fly to the Volta region because there is an airport in Volta region. But since I want to show my friends from Jamaica more of Ghana, we had to drive. And thanks to Japan Motors for sponsoring us with Nissan Navara, which is actually made and produced in Ghana. And our first stop, was Aqua Safari. Aqua Safari. Isn't it? Aqua Safari is like a resort. Uh, we have, you have, you're going to have 24 hours back at service. Anytime you call, they'll be there to assist you. Okay. Throughout your stay till we check out. Oh, I feel like I'm in Jamaica, man. Hey, <laughs> man. Oh, yeah, this feels like yard. For sure. They're gonna be around me or what? Yes, They'll, you have their number. Anytime you need anything, you just call room service, everything. You just call them the person. So each person is going to get a bottle of tea. Oh, this is new. <laughs> that doesn't mean that I'm paying more for that. Um, that's why our prices have been reviewed, like, you know. So now it's um, four meal, that three meal, mm. which is breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You have a mini bar access in your room. Um, so that's why our prices are going up a bit. Hmm. Yes, with the oh. butler service and oh. other activities. I mean, uh, the last time I came here was a year ago, and apparently so many things have changed, including the price. I guess if I'm paying that amount of money in here, I'm hoping to see something different. So, yeah, I mean, come with me. You know, I just want my friends from Jamaica to feel at home today. So, yeah. Walk on, my brother. Welcome to Aqua Safari, man. Yo, he's been telling me about this place and what I saw in the video. Exactly. Exactly what I see, you know, is a vibe. So, you know what? We're gonna have a good time inside water and on air. But what they? 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 Uh -huh. I hear you don't like to swim, man. No, no, no. Whenever I come to Aqua Safari, you I swim. swim. Oh. You know what? Because you. I have trainers in here. <laughs> Check the next one out. Yes. Like it in here? So you know what? I, I have a proposal. Okay. What's the proposal? The proposal is like you guys, because I'm giving you this place to make a baby in the garden and call the baby Ghana baby. Oh. <laughs>
Yeah, hold it tightly though. <laughs> love is sweet, sir. When money enter, love is sweet. I feel so happy, man. You know why? Because I'm an aqua safari, man. It feels so refreshing anytime I, I come in here. I mean, the breeze from the lake, the greens in here, the islands that I see with my naked eyes. I feel like anytime I come here, I just get to tell you guys that it's a blessing to be from Africa. But I feel like a lot has changed right here, man, because they're trying to turn this place into a luxurious what? resort. And because of that, I think the last time I came here with Trudy, it was more of a walking path to the boat. It's no longer there. And those days that I came, the time that I came in here, this place was literally blocked. But now they are telling you that you can see the view of the lake right from the restaurant. Even the restaurant is now open restaurant. And it looks beautiful, by the way. So yeah, I mean, if it's been long since you came in here, know that when you come here next time, a lot has changed, but it's more beautiful than before. Thank you. Some hospitality from aqua safari staff we had to continue our trip the next day and on our way going we met a super fan of Wadamaya who actually watches my videos from internet cafe it's good to meet you again uh, uh, I, I, I follow you all the time i don't even know about all of you i'm always in the cafe because of me so you have to go to the cafe before you watch yeah. i don't have as much amazing let me let, let me get you a phone so, I'm going to give you a mobile, mobile money number. I'm sending you my number right now. Send me a message. I'll get you a phone. Okay. All right, so that you, you'll be watching me on the phone right in your Thank room, you man. Thank you very much. <laughs> my husband. Yo! Hey. Watch me in a cafe, man. Yeah, of course. Thank you. I need another doctor. I just came for it. No worries, man. Let me, let me give you my number, yeah? Okay. I'll you. get you a phone, bro. Thank you very much. The first day that my Jamaican friends actually arrived in Ghana, I took them to a local restaurant for them to eat, and we actually ate in a port. Now we're going to the Volta region, we saw so many ports along the road, and personally, I was curious in terms of how these ports have been made. You know what, I've never seen one before, and you and I are gonna experience how they make it for the first time. All right, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, so, is this, you always use machine, or I thought they use the hands to do it. Uh, for slab, this is the slab. This one like this. It's slab. You don't use machine to do it. Use the hand. Yeah, you roll it and dry it for you to dry. Oh, okay. but, but not too much. Before we come and drain them. Can we make pot right now? Yeah, on the machine. On the machine. Yeah. Where are you gonna get your clay? The clay is here. Oh. Is it, a, is it a special clay that you guys use? Yeah. Ah. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Hello. That took me a very long time, bro. Because it didn't think it was off. This looks like my head, but I think uh, maybe the Sheldon's head will be better than this one. Though. Could you show me the love of the dead? All right.
like dripping water. No, but I need palm wine. <laughs> I mean, I mean, what, man? Oh, wow. So, you gotta put this. Uh, hey, looks like I'm gonna drop it. Okay. Thank you. So, whoa. After this, what, what, what do you, what, what do they do, man? We wait for it to dry. Before sending to the oven. Oven. So this one is, is, is done already? Yeah. Some of them cracked. So you have to do it again. This one. Yes. Okay. You can't use it. And is it not hot? It's hot. Ha! Jeez! This, you hold this for me, man. <laughs> no, it's not hot, bro. It's hot. <laughs> <laughs> we got tow boots in here you see a lot of them but right now they're not tow boots in the country anymore but you still see them yeah so what we're gonna do is like we're gonna stop the car so we stop the car they will all come to the car to sell something to us so look at that you see the speed okay yeah uh -huh. you see that yeah oh everyone is coming you're not getting it shot oh we were mobbed with different kind of street food from the water region and there is one meal that was so special that we had to buy it. And that is the turkey butt. This is the... The turkey butt, bro. Turkey butt. Shake that booty, 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 <laughs> booty, booty. That's the turkey shaking the booty, bro. <laughs> All right, so back home in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. I can't make nobody knows so that I eat this. You oh, understand? No, but I, guess what? chicken batty. Them know. In Jamaica, we call this chicken batty. And if you eat chicken batty, it means you're chatting off. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so, anyway. <laughs> Let's try it. But what does it taste like? Don't tell nobody me said it's it good. Ah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's quite it's fatty because it's, it's at the tail feather part, but it's crispy on the outside. Out of everything I've eaten in here so far, this is quite good. I love your shirt. I do so. You're an African. Yeah, I, I know. No, 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 I'm an African and you're also an African, but yeah. you are from Keta. I'm from Keta. So keeping environmental treasures alive. Yes. That's awesome. Man. Yeah, Keta is a beautiful town. We have the people, we have the land, land and we have the, the potential. potential. What is that one thing that describes the people of this place then? I tell you, the sun is pristine, the beach is there, we have the forest. The four? S. S. What is which the is the sea, the sand, the sun, and we have S star X. What does that mean, man? <laughs> it means X. Oh! <laughs> These are the four components of tourism. Oh, Every awesome. area that has these four components is about to go. I love that. Hello. What a busy day. First day in the Volta region. We've had a crazy awesome day. I would say that the hospitality in this part of Ghana is absolutely amazing. Like we have like three hotels to choose from. I don't even know what to say. But we're spending a night at uh, Ellie Beach Resort. And um, you know what? I don't know what to tell you. I know and believe that in the morning I'm gonna show you a lot. All I need to do right now is to go shower. See, my whole body is dirty. We've done a lot today. I know Steven is even tired right now. But we're doing all this just to put the Volta region on the map. So come with me. I'm gonna spend a night in here. And tomorrow morning, I'll show you a beautiful drone shot just to show you that Ghana is not just Accra. I was born and raised in 
Ghana, but I never knew that Ghana has Ramsar site. So I was told that one of Ghana's Ramsar site is right here in the Volta region. So the next morning, together with the team, we had to go and check it out. For us to go see the Ramsar site, we have to use a boat to get there. That's why I got my word, my life jacket representing. So you know what? If you are ready to see it, come with me. Let's go. made it to one of the five Ramsar site in Ghana and the one that I saw in Namibia there were so many beds but I mean Ghana I don't know why maybe the transit flights came so early so that the <laughs> that's why the beds are not here I'm seeing only four beds in here but yeah anyway this is the Ramsar site here in Keta so if you ever find yourself in this region make sure you come check it out maybe you might be lucky to see beds I was not lucky, I just found only four. But I think the bats are also scared of Ghanaians because Ghanaians eat everything. Eh? The bats, the bees. The bats the bees, <laughs> <laughs> the the bees yeah? so that's why the bats are scared. Or maybe we came at the wrong time, but I actually saw four bats, yeah? So maybe you might be lucky when you come here next time. This looks like a sea defense. Exactly so. This is the Keta Sea Defense Project. Oh. 1998-99 to 2004. Does it mean that the sea was over there? That's why they did this? Sure. The sea was about uh, 100 meters away before these walls were built into it. And by coastal engineering works, the sea started to pile up sand on the western part of the world. So which means that those days there was no beach? Here. No, no, no. There was no beach here. It was water. I was a GSS student when the water was far away here. Oh! So which means you claim the land from the sea? Yeah, the land has been reclaimed. The land has been gotten back from the sea through this coastal engineering, which is known as the Keta Sea Defense Project. It's how one of the largest coastal engineering works in Africa. How much did it cost? You? It cost $84 million under the President John Jerry Rawlings. Oh. At least it has provided beach for you all. Of Otherwise, course. you guys would be swimming in your bedrooms. Yeah, yeah? we have gotten <laughs> out. Oh, 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 yeah, it closer to your, yourself to back you. on it. Back, yeah. Aqua. Hey, I, but Aqua will fall. <laughs> Aqua will fall, yeah? But, uh, Aqua means, Aqua means, yeah? Your, to the chest. chest. To the chest. Your chest should be yeah, yeah. moved back. Aqua. 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 So your Aqua. chest is called Aqua. 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 So yeah, so Aqua means your chest. Aqua. Aqua. This is like a whole workout, man. <laughs> <laughs> but um, since Keta is a fishing community, this is one of the things that people in here survive on. Um, does it mean that you've got a lot of fish farmers in here? Yeah, there are, there are fish nets, a lot of fishing nets, uh, fisher folks, fish mongers. Hmm. It's one of the key economic activities here. Which means that it's cheaper to buy fishes it's in It's cheaper here. to buy when you buy it at the shore. Yeah. As soon as it comes on shore like this. Okay. Uh, then I guess I won't do this. I'll wait for the, for the fish to come and okay. I'll buy it. That's fine. Thank That's you. Enough. I know by now most of you need to know that the cleanest beaches in Ghana can be found in the Volta region. But did you know that everywhere you see the sea, slavery actually happened? Which means that the Volta region was not left out. This fort was built by the Danish Norwegians. And most of the enslaved from this fort were shipped to the Caribbean countries. St. Thomas, St. Louis, St. Croix, St. John. Jamaica? Yeah, Trinidad and Tobago. And Jamaica? And Jamaica.
They say that it was. So if you don't believe that slavery actually existed, you're very stupid. Because look at that. We have traits that shows that it's something that really happened. Yet people are saying these stories are made up. I, I, I don't know what's wrong with some of you, man. This is one of the punishment points. What is this? A punishment point. So slaves were brought from the Tanjung early in the morning, brought them here, nailed them down, tied their hands at their back, shackled their necks, and raised it towards the sun. And because of the suffering they went through, they tried to use their fingernails over the dark holes. This is the original. Maybe there was something that didn't happen, but the oldest original. Mm -hmm. So those things that were destroyed by the sea, some of these holes sometimes they reach your waist, but sometimes above. That's for them to try to escape for their lives. But because the wall was thick, so they couldn't. With the shackles and the chains, they are original here. Yeah. They are original? They are original. They even have yeah. padlock for yeah, the shackles. Yeah, they have shackles. And those are the keys. The old time keys. God damn it. Wow, so you mean the keys are... Yeah, yeah. original. They can see their freedom, but yeah. can't take it. Yeah. The more I travel within Ghana, the more I learn new things. The last time I went to Abetifi Kohu, that's when I found the highest human settlement in Ghana. But the feet were somewhere around 2,080 feet. And coming to the Volta region for the second time, finding out that the highest human settlement in Ghana is actually in the Volta region is really shocking. I guess the tourism ministry needs to do something about it because when you go to Kou or when you go to Abetifi, you will still see the signboard that, oh, this is the highest settlement in Ghana. But coming in here, my watch is telling me that I'm currently 2,400 feet. Which one should we believe? But I'm here myself and I've not been everywhere in Ghana, but so far where I've been, I would say that this is the highest human settlement in Ghana. Whenever you decide to visit the Volta region, trust me, you're gonna fall in love just like me. Because there are so many interesting things and interesting places to see in the Volta region. I mean, if you wanna chill with monkeys, just go to the monkey sanctuary and you will never regret going there. <laughs> but if you also want to reduce your weight, my brother, my sister, go climb the tallest mountain in West Africa. <laughs> After that extreme hike, all you need is a refreshment. And the best place to refresh yourself is that beautiful waterfall in the Volta region. It's so cold out here. Let me tell you something. You cannot come to the Volta region without visiting this beautiful, magical queen sitting right here. Take a train ride just to see she got a beautiful name. The beautiful name is Billy Waterfall. Whoa! My name is Mr. Ghana, baby. If you really enjoyed this episode, don't forget to share, like, subscribe, and be part of the Million Family. I'll see you all in the next one. Water region to the world. Peace out.